following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Hello, everybody, and welcome to part four of the list on this big SummerSlam weekend. I'm Mike Hogan. And I'm just a cop. And this is Top Roll Rowdy, episode 72. And here we go. 100 wrestling paper news you must see before you die with key matches 15 to number 11. Number 15, I'll go ahead and yeah, you are, screw myself over week. here. Yes. Number 15, New Japan Pro Wrestling, King of Pro Wrestling 2013 with Okada taking on Tanahashi for the IWGP title. Nakamura versus Morafuji for the IWGP IC title. And Shibata versus Ashia. I didn't cuss. Did not cuss. I don't think you did. I wonder though. And number 14, WWE, WWE Money in the Bank 2011. Key matches CM Punk versus John Cena for the WWE title. Christian versus Randy Orton for the world title. Just one, one more match. match. One more match. That's his legacy right there. That is his legacy since they had just gone. Woo. Money in the Bank ladder match. Was matches. This awesome. is ladder match. Oh, yeah, then let's get matches. Number 13 was WF WrestleMania 10. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon in the iconic IC, uh, IC ladder match. Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. Macho Man Randy Savage versus Crush in a Falls. Cow, anywhere match! Number 12 is ECW Heat Wave 1998. Key matches RVD and Sabu versus Habushi and Do. Oh. Shinzaki for the tag. You thought you got titles. out of it. Taz versus Bam Bam Bigelow for the ECW title. And Masi Tanaka versus Mike Awesome. I remember that match. Yes, the, the Tanaka and Mike Awesome, they did a lot of great matches. Uh, number 11, it was the New Japan Pro Wrestling Super J Cup 1994. Key matches, the whole dead gum card. They don't say that on here, but the whole dadgum card. The whole Hoover Down show. There he The whole RBD show. <laughs> uh, number, and then, number 11. Jesus. <laughs> 11 long term booking directions for WWE in 2015 slash 16. Number 10, Charlotte is Divas champion on the main roster. NXT Charlotte has been ready for a main roster call-up for well over six months now. She dropped the NXT Women's title to Sasha Banks in February, which left her without any real purpose in the time since. The long-term direction Triple H wants to bring is to bring Charlotte up as a very big character in a revitalized main roster diva scene. She's an athletic woman, a beautiful yet tough character. With that in mind, don't do it. With that in mind, the hope is that she can be to ease equivalent to Ronda Rousey. The long-term goal is to get her over as that kind of a dominantly uh, athletic female role model. A Divas title run in the next year is almost a certainty. WWE are just waiting on the opportune moment to bring her in. They already have. Uh, it could well be at some point over the summer. It well has been. As part of Paige's request for help against the tyranny of the Bella's dominance. That's what we called the entire time. And now Big Foley's telling you bye. Charlotte would smash the Diva institution, replacing it with a new era of women's wrestling, and that's exactly what has happened. So this right here, they are behind, but they are exactly right as to what's happened with Charlotte and the women's division. Oh, most definitely. <coughs> And now, right now, folks, enjoy this video package we have for the Queen of the Ring Tournament as we are have a little video package of Paige and Mickey James. So enjoy this as we are getting ready for SummerSlam right here at Top Road Reality. Enjoy.
welcome back, folks, and I hope you enjoyed that video package of the two divas who are in the finals. What of a our... final! This has been the best tournament we have done so far. Yeah. Both number three seeds, no number one seeds. No number one, number no number two, no nothing, but number three well, is Paige versus little... number three is Mickey James. Let's and... talk a little bit about Paige and uh, Mickey James. First, let's talk about the titles that each ladies have won. Mickey of James their career so far. has been the TNA Knockouts Champion, the Divas Champion, and the WWE Women's Champion. And Paige, in her short career, has been NXT Women's Champion and Divas Champion. First ever. NXT oh, Women's Chess. Mickey James matches. It says that she's had 392. Is this accumulated for her whole career? So far, yes. As much as you can find there is? Of her last, this is up to her last match that she's had. 392 matches with 51 pay per view appearances, whereas Paige has had. Paige has had 346 matches and 15 pay per view matches. Now that goes a long way, seeing as how far apart they are in being a WWE. Oh, most definitely. Because Paige is a 10-year veteran and has already almost surpassed the amount of matches Mickey James has had in her entire career. Less than 50. That's huge. Win, loss, draw. Mickey James has won 232 matches. She lost 152. That's pretty good odds there. Yep. And she had eight draws in her career. And Paige has won 195 matches, lost 148 matches, pretty. and has three draws. That's pretty. that's not yes. That's pretty even. That's like 50-50 there on your, pretty much on your career. It is, so. but at the same time, she's very far away from being done. Oh yes, most definitely. Um, but that is your breakdown for the uh, Queen of the Ring tournament, the first ever. And so next yes. week, episode 73, we will crown, if you will, the very first ever Queen of the Ring for top rope reality. So royal, we have to crown. Yes. There you go. So that will be next week on episode 73. But as we finish up, right as SummerSlam is about to begin, there goes the fire. Pyro! Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rope Reality is getting out all the tools necessary they are. to rebuild the NWO. Now you say the NWO is not a promotion, no. but the way it was promoted, the way it was built, was it was a promotion oh, yes. inside a promotion. It so, had its own pay per view. It did, but it was also a faction, so we did it a little bit differently, tinkered with it a little bit. We did three stars apiece, and we did two tag teams. So it's a little bit bigger than a faction, but not as big as an actual promotion that we've been doing lately. Yes. And so uh, I will go ahead and do my two tag teams. Okay, then I'll do my two tag teams. I picked Buff Bagwell and Scott Steiner. Wow. Which they were in the original. Yep. And um, in, uh, in uh, they were also, these next two were in Japan. Oh, they started out like some Randy Orton versus Sheamus. Not the best idea in my opinion. No, that's not, that's not a good one to start off. No, nope. not in my opinion. But they may bring it. They may bring it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my other tag team is a... But uh, hold on for you say oh. tag team. I hate to bring up old news, but last time somebody cashed in with the money in the bank, they started the first match at SummerSlam. Oh. So, go ahead and continue. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, we forget about him. Um, but then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they are four people talking. Um, that's not the, that's woo, the French people. Look at them names. That's the French people. Ladies. Your parents. They ought to be yep. expected. The... They've added a third guy? Oh, is that the third? Jerry Sata. Oh. I don't know you, sir. Uh, oh, Jamari first. Ah, Jamari! That's funny. That's going way back. That is going way back. But anyway, my other tag team was um, probably part of the NWO Japan. Um, it didn't matter. But they didn't have to but be they part were of also They didn't have to be part of the NWO. No, anybody we picked doesn't have to be part of the NWO. That is true. But I, I kind of wanted to go along with the lines of, you know, if it fit the mold. That's fine. And they were, they were also in the WCW version as well, a little bits and pieces. But ladies and gentlemen, I am picking the great Muta and Masahiro Chana. That's my two tag teams. Well, my two tag teams are. I did leave. I did bring in and keep two people who were part of the NWO. The Outsiders, Hall and Nash. Original two. You need to have them in the NWO, I believe. You should. And also two ring technician, a great tag team, Dole Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. Very interesting. Taking the four horsemen and throwing them in the NWO. I like it. I like it. Now, for the for the three uh, individuals, I'll do one. You do. Okay. I'll do one. You do. I don't know. 
Uh, my first one is Kevin Owens. Woo! Kevin Owens in the NWO. I think he definitely fits the ideal NWO man. My first one here is a rated R superstar. Ah. Who would make the NWO very good? He's not the top pick. He's the bottom pick. The bottom pick. So Kevin Owens is my bottom pick. So that's it's huge. This is huge. <laughs> this is big. <laughs> if you don't know who the radar superstar is, it's Edge. Edge. My next pick is the opponent. The opponent. SummerSlam. Kevin Owens. I'm picking Cesaro to be the, the Swiss NWO. Superman. That is huge. Huge interview already. Who is your second pick? My second pick is a legend, is a Hall of Famer, is a man who should have done better for WWE, but was kept in the shadows of Hulk Hogan. Damn! A true man. You don't know where he's coming from. The Macho Man. Ah, Randy Savage. was a gap. Well, hopefully, with this interview over here, Macho Man don't get held down by the Hulk Hogan. Yeah, we hope not. Brother, because ladies and gentlemen, my third and final pick is Hulk Hogan, brother. <laughs> so that's not good for Macho Man. No, it's not good for Macho Man. But that was only your second pick, so who is your number one seed, if you will, for the new Top of Rally interview? A man who loves power. A man who has led a faction before. Oh. A man who is the mind of the game. Triple H. Very good. As we are, as we finish this up, yes. I actually s s listened on YouTube. Listen now, Triple H. Yes, Triple H. Triple H. H. If you will. <laughs> oh, it's right now. Oh, I already started here. Because yeah, he was talking on the microphone and he's like, I'm tired of that right Whoop. now. Anyway, uh, but no, I actually watched this or listened to it on YouTube. Uh, they had a... Um, Jericho was the moderator for this, but it was Bruce Pritchard and Eric Bischoff. And they had a uh, talk back and forth. It was RF Video was putting this on. And in this talk back and forth, they talked about some plans that never came together. And Bruce Pritchard said that at the time, Hulk Hogan's contract was cut up at WCW. And when contracts come up, they put fillers out, especially back then. So they put a filler out to WWE. And Bruce Pritchard said the actual plan. Here was the plan. Because you're talking about Triple H being the leader of the NWO, technically, yes. kind of. Yes. It, it, of course, your version over yes. there. They actually said that Hulk Hogan's contract was coming up. And the WWE creative minds at the time, we always dog on the creative minds now. That would have sucked if this happened. Yeah. The creative minds at the time actually had this as the plan. They wanted, get this, Hulk Hogan as the leader of degeneration. Oh! <laughs> Suck it, brother! Suck it, Oh, my lord. Suck that, it, brother! That would have bombed. Bruce Pritchard said that was actually something they talked about. Bomb. I guess because Sean was leaving. Bomb. And so they, you know, thank God Triple H stepped up to the plate. Jeez! That would have been horrible. Suck it, brother! <laughs> Suck it, brother! Are you ready? <laughs> brother, brother? Yes. I said, Hulkamaniacs, are <laughs> you ready? Hulk Not the black folks. Hulkamanian degenerates. <laughs> I mean, how do you do all that, you know? It's crazy. That is weird, ain't it? That's so what are you going to do, brother? <laughs> when DX and Hulkamania run wild on you. That's what it would have been. The That's DX Hulkamania army. Oh, boy. Because you know he has to get his own stuff in. So, I mean, that, that would have been weird. So that's something to ponder on out there in YouTube land right now. That's, you got to ponder on that. How horrible. Think back and rebook DX. Think about how horrible it would have been with Hulk Hogan as the leader of Degeneration X. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I shouldn't have killed O'Neill. says, terrible, terrible, terrible. That would have been Or Charles Barkley. Terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> and it would have been. Well, that is it for part four. Yes. And also, that is it for this week's big SummerSlam but week. Next week. Here. Huge. Next week. We finish up. We finish up. Finally. 
40,000 weeks later, yes. we finish up the 100 pay-per-view matches you must see before you die, and we name the queen of the ring between Paige and Mickey James, and we also continue the 11 long-term booking directions for WWE in 2015-16. Of course, we got news. We've got American Dream Countdowns. Yes. we got SummerSlam Review on the pay-per-view review. Oh, six and oh, seven. Oh, six oh, seven. And huge, we continue to rebuild. Now we're going back to actual promotions. We're going back and we're going way, way back. back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going back to Continental Championship Wrestling. Yes, we're going, what, who, what, who, what, who? If you lived in Alabama, if you lived in Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Tennessee, you do. Continental Championship Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, we will rebuild it and we will be back to the normal format of 20 stars and so, so many, many so many tag teams and so many women. Yes. It's not going to be like the same as the NWO. It's no. going to be back to normal again and we will go over that and all the stuff we just said next week. Plus, plus we will talk about how SummerSlam. great SummerSlam will be if it's going to be that great. If it was that great. You will hear, hear about it on 73, where we review that. Plus, we bring back WrestleCade, Global Force, Ring of Honor News, because we did skip it this week, because it's all about SummerSlam. So whatever happens, we'll be here right here next week at Tom Bro Ready. I'm Mike Hogan. And I'm just a kind. And we'll see each and one of you next week right here on the YouTube for Tom Bro Rowdy. See you later as we go watch SummerSlam. All right, pretty good. Go, go, go!